right, 5.3, finally up, increasing and decreasing intervals. We're going to be looking at basically the first derivative and studying the, that first inter derivative in order to figure out things about our original function. So just so you know where you're headed, the objectives are listed down below. These are all the things that you should know by the end of the lesson. We're just going to look at this um, intuitively and kind of see, can we make the relationship between um, just functions and then what the derivative function would look like? So because if you can, um, one graph will tell you a lot about the other. So we're going to look at what would f prime of x look like graphed. And to do that, I'm going to do a table of values here. Oops, oops. We're going to have our x and then our y values. But before we even do that, we're going to have to derive. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and start plotting some values here. We're going to have, let's say we start with negative 2. All right. If we plug in negative 2, uh, we're going to go straight into our function and plug that in. We have f prime negative 2, which would be negative 2 times negative 2 plus 2. So 4 plus 2, we would get 6. All right. Let's just plug in the next value, negative 1. And I hope you can see that visually on the graph. If we were to draw at 1, x equals 1 on our graph, we could go ahead and draw in our tangent line. And the slope of that, you could kind of just look at it and try to see what is the slope of that tangent, what is that instantaneous rate of change. But otherwise, <coughs> you can just find the derivative like we're doing and plug in the value. f prime of 0. What would the slope of the tangent line be at x equals 0 on our graph? This is going to be 2. Ah, this one's a special one. If I plug in f of 1, I hope you can see right there. That is a critical value. Um, I hope that you wouldn't even have to question what that's going to be. This is going to be 0. And check that. F prime option. Alright, in this next slide, I finished off that table of values and I've just transferred it onto this. So now we can really answer the question of what will f prime of x look like? Look like we do have the xy values here, so I'm just going to plot those. I'm going to get negative 2, comma 6. We get the 0, 2, here's our critical value, and there we have it. So, well, how can you compare them? Well, when we're looking at this f prime of x function, what I want you to notice is that all up here, these are all positive derivatives. They're all positive slopes. Um, so if you were to look at, there was that critical value. Everything over here that I'm circling, it was um, between from negative infinity, basically up until 1. So in this, that's that interval right there, that we had positive derivatives. And as soon as we hit that critical value, as soon as we hit that peak, that's when our derivative really slowed down. It actually ceased to exist. We had a zero rate of change. And then it started getting negative. So down here, all of our derivatives are negative values. And um, if you look on our graph from before, the relationship there, um, those negative derivative values told us that we had a decreasing interval. All right, so this is going to lead us to the main topic of this chapter and um, theorem on the theorem that we have on page 328. What it states is this. if the derivative is greater than zero. So I'm just going to kind of reword this right here. If the dir, I'm just going to call it dir, is greater than zero, so in other words, positive, what we looked or what we observed in that first slide was that if the derivative was positive, what that told us was that was a place where the function was increasing. Function is increasing. And I'm just going to write ink. All right. And then down here, on the contrary, if our derivative is less than zero, so in other words, if dir is negative. Okay. So just another way of looking at what those definitions told us in our book. So we're going to once again consider this. 
what I want you to know is that we're not going to be graphing the derivative every single time. Um, what I'm going to ask you guys to do is set up what we're going to call a sign line. And I'll kind of show you these steps in a second, but I'm going to just look at this x-axis right here. And I'm going to mirror it down here. This right here is my value 1. And this right here would have been where the y-axis was, so at 0. And right there on that critical value, okay, at that x equals 1, um, I would have marked that on my sign line. So here is an example of a sign line. And I'll have a better example of this in a second. But what we're just going to simply do is, based off that theorem in the slide before, all we need to do is say, all right, there is this interval right here from 0 or I'm sorry, from negative infinity, oops, bad infinity, to 1. And I want to know, is that increasing or decreasing? Because it's at these critical values where the intervals are possibly changing um, from increasing, in this case, from increasing to decreasing. Okay, um, so it's at these critical values that we need to examine um, on either side of it what's happening. So I could go ahead and say exactly what this is by just examining the derivative. I could just go ahead and plug in what is f prime of and test a point. We'll, we'll just test 0. What is f prime of 0? Well, go ahead and plug that in like we were doing before. Negative 2 times 0 plus 2 into the derivative. What we get is a positive result. Positive result would mean that this was increasing. That is an increasing interval. And then from this honorable interval outwards, so from 1 to positive infinity, what's going to be doing? Well, at that critical point, we now have to examine what's happening out on this side and just go ahead and plug in another test point. I'm going to test 5. Okay, F prime, sorry, I'm all over the place here. F prime of 5, if I plug that into my derivative that we calculated earlier, negative 2 times 5 plus 2, what we do get is um, negative 8. And that doesn't even matter to me so much, is that it's negative. I don't really care about the value. It's that negative that really makes a difference. This is a negative um, derivative, so therefore this is a decreasing interval. Um, we're going to be using that first derivative um, and creating the sign line to help us determine, determine the increasing and decreasing values of our function, plus more. So um, these are the guidelines, and I'll let you kind of look through them. But we're going to do this every single time um, to look at and make predictions about our, our original function. So an example of this. We are going to, from number 17 in your book, find the open intervals over which the function is increasing or decreasing, and then locate all relative extrema. Before I even go into those four steps, the first one finding, um, being finding the critical values, I'm going to be lazy, and to avoid using the product rule in all this, I'm just going to distribute that x squared. So now, I'm going to find the critical values. This was step one. Uh, I'm going to have to first find what is f prime of x. All right, now that I know that, I need to find the critical values. So I would have to either find out when is this derivative undefined or when it's equal to 0. Know that this is never going to be undefined because this is a polynomial. It's all over 1. So for what x value would it be undefined? Well, there is none. Because I'm just going to solve for when this is equal to 0. And being that it is a quadratic, you could always use the quadratic formula. But I also hope you can see that you can factor this. I'm just going to pull out a 3x. All right. And then I hope you can see in this factor that if you have that factor equaling 0, so in x is equal to 0, um, in that factor this whole thing will go to 0. Or if 2 minus x equals 0, um, when x is equal to 2, that's when we're going to get um, the, the derivative equaling to 0. So step 2 of this whole thing is going to be set up a number line, or a sign line. And this is going to be the sign line for our derivative function. It's going to be telling us over what intervals is it positive or negative. So I am going to plot our critical values. One of them was at x equals 0. 
and then another one was at x equals 2. So it's between these intervals, this first one that I'm going to look at right here. This is where our original function was either increasing or decreasing. And in order to determine that, I'm going to check what was the derivative, what is one of the derivative um, values in that interval. So I'm just going to go ahead and test the point negative 1. I'm going to plug that in to my, my derivative. So I'm just going to be plugging it into f um, prime of x. But I'm plugging in specifically what is the derivative at negative 1. When you do that, you're going to get 6 squared. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. It's not even so much the value. If you could look at it right now and tell me if it was negative or positive, that's all I care about. I will do this out. So it's that negative that really is telling to me this is going to be negative okay over that interval I'm also going to have to test a point in here I think the easiest point is going to be 1 because in this interval um, at that critical point 0 right here that's where it's possible for our our function to switch from increasing to decreasing so it's possible that we're going to have a switch in our our derivative and I'm going to check that right now f prime of 1 will be my test point, minus 3, that is a positive, and I'm not even going to care what that is, we all know that's 3, but it's the positive that I care about. And then finally, f prime, I'm just going to go ahead and test 3, because from in, um, this point, from 2 and beyond, um, I'm going to ask myself what's happening there, what kind of derivative are we looking at, I'm just going to plug in 3. I'm going to go ahead and tell you I can see right now that's going to be negative. Go ahead and test it if you don't believe me, but there is negative. So based off of all of this, what I can tell you from this, this graph um, or from this sign line is in the interval from negative infinity to 0 is this very first one that I did right here. Um, in that interval from negative infinity up until zero, I had, because the derivatives in that segment was negative, a decreasing interval. Okay, and then from zero up until two, it was increasing. And from two to infinity, once again, because I had that negative derivative, this is decreasing. Okay. And the last part is locate all relative extrema. Um, so remember, the only places for those relative extrema to occur are at the critical points. So what I want you to observe here is by looking at the sign line, when it went or was approaching our critical value of x equals 0, what you need to realize is we're saying that it was decreasing and then it switched at 0 to start increasing. So that would be an example of a minimum, a relative min 0, comma, and this is where I'm going to have to ask you, how am I going to find out what that point is? Well, you're going to have to go back to this equation up here to find out what that y value is. So when you plug in 0, you're going to, into our function f of x, you're going to get 0, sorry, I ran out of room again, 0 squared, and then times 3 minus 0. Well, here, 0 times anything is just 0, so it's 0 comma 0. And then we also have a relative maximum because I want you to observe that when we got an approach to this critical value, um, what happened was we were increasing, that's indicated by this positive, but then we switched to decreasing. So it was at this that we had a peak or a hill. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in 2. But once again, what is that y value? Well, go back to your original equation, f of 2, so 2 squared and then 2 or 3 minus 2. What we're going to get is 4 times 1, 2 comma 4. All right, and just to see all of our work visually, you can switch back between these two slides. Um, there it is. And everything that we indicated erp, 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 from negative infinity to 0, we were decreasing and then it started increasing and then it started decreasing. Relative minimum, 
relative maximum, exactly where we said.